In our horror video, we use lighting to give players a lack of information. In the action video, we use lighting to focus the player's attention to specific information. In this video, we will flood the player with an overabundance of information as we use lighting to create a fantasy adventure environment. Adventure games are about exploration, and it's a designer's job to make that world as appealing as possible. These games consist of bright lights, vibrant colors, and surprises around every corner. Show a player a temple, they'll want to explore it. Show a player a mountain, they'll want to climb it. A designer uses lighting to make these locations appear vivid and more appealing. Let's look at the outdoor area. I cranked out the brightness on both the sunlight and shadows. But it takes more than bright lights to make an area look good. My directional sunlight has tints of green mixed into the yellow and my skylight shadows are blue. In order to stand out from the sunlight, the lanterns give off a mellow orange glow. I've got some beams of yellow sunlight shining through the trees, also known as god rays. Let me pause for a second and talk about god rays. They're frequently used in video games, but just as frequently used incorrectly. God rays are a natural phenomenon caused by light poking through gaps in clouds or trees. There are two rules you should follow when adding god rays to your maps. First rule. God rays can only be placed under cloud cover, trees, or holes in ceiling-like objects. Second, god rays always point in the same direction, away from the sun. Looking back in the editor, I can look at my directional light and pose my god rays in the same direction. Quick tip. Don't forget about weather effects. Particles and lights can help create wind and rain and build an immersive environment. Our interior area is just as colorful as our outdoor environment. Greens, blues, and golds draw your eye to every inch of the room. Just like in our previous map, I use vines as a way of drawing the player's eye. But rather than have our vines pop out, they blend in with the scene. They act as a landmark to help players navigate, rather than a path indicator like in the shooter example. It encourages players to look around, try out different passages, and find hidden surprises. For the final room, I bring the color to 11 by using an even higher variety of shades. Dark blue, red, and white are the primary shades in this room, with hints of teal, gold, and orange. Make sure you know your color wheel and what colors stand out when paired together and what colors blend in with each other. I even added lights to the ceiling so that no matter which way the player looks, they'll see something pretty. This concludes my tutorial on lighting tips for upcoming level designers. If you want to see something else design related, put it in the comments and I'll try to make another video. 